Storage offers enterprise-grade, globally distributed cloud object storage with S3 compatibility and CDN-like performance at cold storage prices. The service is built with zero-trust security, utilizing existing excess storage capacity in data centers all over the world for a low-cost, low-carbon solution. It's one thing to hear about Storage TCS, but you really have to see it to appreciate it. I'm logging into the admin console. Of course, we support multi-factor authentication. When you first log in, you start on the project list. Projects are the top level of access management within the storage service. Application access credentials and billing are done at the project level. Also on the screen, I can access my account settings where I can manage my login and security settings, including multi-factor authentication and session timeout. When I select a project, I'm prompted for the project level encryption passphrase. This passphrase is used with our unique approach to server-side encryption that ensures the storage platform doesn't retain access to your encryption information. You can use different encryption keys, but the platform makes it easy to use one for each project. The project dashboard shows your current usage and convenient links to common tasks like uploading data, managing buckets, and managing the users with access to your project. The Buckets tab does pretty much what you'd expect. You can view, manage, or interact with buckets and objects. One of the other features offered by Storage DCS is the Link Share service. If I click on an object, in this case, a 4K 60 frame per second video of Big Buck Bunny, copyright Blender Foundation 2008, I can preview the video, download it, delete it, or share it. The detail also shows me a map with geolocation of the storage nodes storing the 800 plus pieces of my video. If I share the video, I get a read-only URL to view the file. That URL includes a landing page that shows a preview of the file, or in the case of multimedia, includes a player. Playing the video streams the file via the gateway directly from storage nodes. I don't have to download it first, and it's not cached. What's more impressive is that I can seek to any point in the video. On the back end, the gateway is locating the exact pieces and range of bytes within that piece downloading, re-encoding, and decrypting on the fly, then streaming the bytes in the browser. Again, the performance is very smooth, and all of that complexity is abstracted to a set of familiar S3-compatible commands. The next tab in the Management Console is the Access section. This is where you can create application credentials to programmatically interact with the storage service. Access management for applications storing and retrieving data on storage is managed with access grants. An access grant is a security envelope that contains a satellite address, a restricted API key, and a set of one or more restricted prefix-based encryption keys, everything an application needs to interact with the storage service. On the screen, you'll see existing access grants created through the satellite console on this project. These access grants may be deleted, but any application or shared links using these access grants will immediately lose access. You have three options to create access credentials. You can create an access grant for a native integration with the storage service. Native integrations feature end-to-end -end encryption and high-throughput data transfer using peer-to-peer -peer direct transfers to and from the storage nodes with high parallelism. You would use an access grant using the storage CLI, the storage self-hosted S3 gateway, applications with native support like our clone, or our native libraries and bindings. When you specify your encryption key creating the access grant, that occurs client-side in the browser and the storage service does not store or have access to your encryption information. You can also create S3 compatible application credentials. When you create S3 credentials, you'll be prompted to name the set of credentials. The name will appear on the list of access grants so you can manage them. Next, you can restrict the permissions for the set of credentials. You can make them read-only for content distribution, for example, or you can make them write-only to support a use case where immutability or ransomware resistance are important. You can also restrict access to a bucket or provide an expiration date. In the last step, you can use your project encryption passphrase or create a new one just for this set of credentials. Now you'll be presented with the access key, secret key, and endpoint, where you can use to configure virtually any S3-compatible tool or application, including the AWS CLI and bindings. Finally, you can create just an API key. You can use an API key to configure client-side tools and generate access grants with an encryption passphrase entirely offline. This is generally used in workflows where privacy and security are of maximum importance. The storage access management paradigm and encryption ecosystem are best in class and have some pretty amazing capabilities. I'd encourage you to explore further in our documentation. The last main section is the Teams tab. You can invite other people to register for a storage account and then add them to one or more of your projects. Team members could then perform all the actions we've just seen, interact with the object browser, create and manage credentials, etc. Beyond that, you have convenient links to other resources like the documentation, the discussion forum where you can get help from the community and for pro account users we have a standard support web portal that's all there is to it sign up for a free account and get started with enterprise grade globally distributed cloud object storage s3 compatibility and cdn like performance at cold storage prices take advantage of zero trust security utilizing existing excess storage capacity in data centers all over the world for a low cost and low carbon solution